What's good YouTube? Mario Devon back with yet another video. So we're starting this video off a lot different now. The reason why is because we're in Nashville, Tennessee. Look, do you see this? This is ridiculous. This is real. Sh what is this substance? What is this stuff at my feet that I, what is this substance? This is snow. This is real snow. But I wanted to come out here and just and just do this out here because it's, it's kind of crazy. It's beautiful. This is, I always tell people snow is like one big soft box following you everywhere. So follow me. We're going to set this camera up somewhere. We're going to talk about life. So right now I have you rigged up on my car, just sitting on my car, and we're just gonna talk about these things right now. And what I wanted to go through was the top five things I think every videographer needs when they're getting started, even videographers that are like kinda experienced. So let's go through that, all right. So right now I have on here the ND filter. That is the first thing I think you need as a, as a videographer because if I wanted to, I can over crank this, I can boost up that shutter speed. Right now we're shooting at 24 frames per second, one over 50th, one over 60th as far as the shutter speed. The thing about that, is that lets in a lot of light. Right now, we have this beautiful snow situation. So what that provides is, you know, a good even overcast kind of light. But what if you don't have this kind of even light? What if you have harsh sunlight and just these overly, overly underexposed shadows, okay? That's when you have the ND filter. If it was like super bright outside right now, like a regular day down in the south, not like this craziness that's around here, this would actually need an ND filter in the middle of the day. Let me show you what an ND filter does. All right, so right now, say for instance, just example, okay? I could just over crank this. Let's say the ISO is this bright. So right now in a, in a normal Southern situation, it will be this bright. I have an ND filter on there. All you have to do is take that ND filter. You just have to turn it, all right? And when you turn it, you'll see the exposure goes down, all right? That is the whole point of the ND filter. Say for instance, it's a bright sunny day down in the South, like it's supposed to be and like this. And you know, you are at 150th and at shutter speed, you want your aperture wide open because you know cinematics. So you try to compensate by stopping down at aperture. Well, now you don't have the shot you want. That that's the point of the ND filter, all right? So that's number one. You need an ND filter, I don't care what thread it is, whatever lens you have. Right now I'm using a 17 to 35. It has a 77 millimeter thread. It's a very common thread. So that really comes in handy for someone like me because most of my lenses are 77 millimeters. So you can use that. You can also use step up and step down rings. If you have ND filters, like if you already have one, you can keep that one and still use it across other lenses. But ND filters, number one. All right, so that's number one. What I say would number two be? I would think that number two would be a wide aperture lens. And the reason why is I think when you have a kit lens, all right, I know a lot of y'all like to rely on the kit lens. You don't want to really invest money in lens. Trust me, if you want to get a better image, don't rely on the kit lens. The kit lens is only going to take you so far. It's going to get you started. But you really wanted a wide aperture lens. I'm going to break down why. You're going to get that more cinematic look, all right, when you get the wide aperture lens. Something that can get down to like f2.8, f2, f1.8, stuff like that. That's how you get the shots that people want. On. Whether you're a photographer or a videographer, having a lower aperture lens is going to just provide a better, higher quality value, all right? The cinematic value that your clients are gonna be looking for. So say for instance, we're at 35. Well, let's, let's push this down to 35 millimeters, all right? So I just zoomed this lens into 35 millimeters, okay? This is 35 millimeters, this is F4, all right? This is a common thing, all right? You'll see a lot of vlogging lenses that only stop down at F4. That's okay, that's what you wanna start off with. I wanna show you the difference between, you know, 35 millimeters at f4 and then 35 millimeters at 1.8 you know so what i want to do i'm got all these things in my pocket because i want to show you stuff you know i want to give you an affordable option that's just sitting in my pocket randomly okay this here is the 35 millimeter macro from the rf mount from Canon, all right? This is the Canon 35 millimeter. This thing is, I think, is about $300, maybe $400 uh, for a full frame lens that is 35 millimeters. So I'm gonna switch from this 17 to 35 that I'm using now. I'm gonna switch to this 35, and you're gonna see the difference in like, just, the, just the production quality you're gonna get out of it. Okay, so now this is 35 millimeters, 1.8. That's what I'm looking at. We're a little bit overexposed, but that's okay. I'm trying to show you just the quality, all right? The cinematic quality you're gonna get. I'm gonna stop this down a little bit to about 2.0 let's see let's do let's do 2.2 even at 2.2 we still get a more pleasing image than a 35 millimeter at f4 i'm just saying when you have a wide aperture lens it provides you 
Oh, we got a plane going by. But I'm saying, you wanna up your production quality. So get something that can stop down to, like I said, 2.8. We're at 2.2 right now. It's a more pleasing look, more pleasing in the background. You got that bouquet that really separates you, the subject, if you're doing a talking head like this. So all I'm saying, I think that is a very important thing to get. I would say that's number two, just to, just to add that look, all right? Add that, that more pleasing look. Again, there are many options out there. You have the 35 millimeter RF, but even on the EF side, there are other options like the 50 millimeter 1.8, the nifty 50. There, I think there's a 35 uh, 2.0 from Canon too that you can get on a crop sensor. There are just other options you can get that can get you a little bit lower. So I'm just saying you have options out there for a lower aperture lens. Do not just settle for your kit lens. That's all I'm saying. It is cold out here. All right, it is cold. So I'm going to go back inside. I really just want to come out here and hang out, but I've hung out enough and we're going to go back inside because it's cold and my hands are freezing and I need to go back inside. All right, so we're going back inside. We're going to finish up the rest of this video inside. We're going to, you know, we're just going to talk. Keep, oh my God, this is ridiculous. What the? Eh. Mm, side it's cold man you know what i'm saying it's crazy out here okay I'm, i don't know what this substance is outside it's this white fluffy substance that i i don't what is what is this you do this this what normal people do snow is that what it's called i don't know so number three i'm gonna go through number three because i think it it may be the most important it's not the most important i just think it's important but if you're a videographer especially if you're doing this youtube thing you need to make sure your audio is good right now i'm using the rode video mic pro plus i'm not telling you to go and spend 200 dollars on a microphone but i'm saying you know you gotta don't rely on the on camera mic we're gonna do some comparisons right now because you know i'm in this house and he's not I'm not outside freezing my hands off anymore so we can do the comparisons i can do them carefully what I've noticed when it comes to audio is that a lot of times when people are getting started with their podcast stuff like that they use their iPhones but the thing that you see out of everything in the entire set is their audio is clean whether they got a lavalier mic whether they have a sure sm7b the audio is clean more often people will stick around for your content if the sound is good if the sound is bad I'll both be, I'm out okay it's just that you know people have apparently high quality gore may ears or something so if they hear something they don't like they they leave they don't they don't stick around to listen to it so i'm gonna recommend that you get another audio option other than the on camera mic so now audio test two this is the onboard camera mic all right it's on the r6 all right what does it sound like to you does it sound better than the rode video mic pro plus now earlier you know let's 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 go I, i'm not gonna sit here and go through this discussion with it man it's disgusting all right let's get the real audio back goodness all right so now we're back to civilization on the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. So earlier I did something ridiculous. I pulled the lens out of my pocket, but you know, that's, that's what the pockets are for in jackets, right? So we're gonna pull something else out the pocket, okay? I'm gonna give you a better recommendation, all right? So this here is the Movo VXR10. I think that's what it is. I'll have the link down below and I also have it in the video, but this here is a little bitty shotgun mic that I would recommend to anybody that's starting off. And the reason why is the Rode Video Micro Usually the top recommended shotgun mic for beginners and even people that are like more experienced. I like to use this mic because obviously it is way smaller than the Rode Video Mic Pro. Blah, 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 blah. These names, too many names. The Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, all right? It is way smaller, way smaller footprint. Doesn't really draw a lot of attention if you're vlogging. But I'm just saying with this microphone, you're actually able to get even better sound than the Rode Video Micro and you also get a better price. So this is about $40 on Amazon right now, the Rode Video Micro. It's about $50, but let's do an audio test. So this is what I sound like with the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. Will it sound better? Will it sound worse? Will you notice a difference? So here we go. Let's, let's, let's see. Will you tell me, okay? So now this is the Movo VXR10. Does it sound good? Does it sound better? Does it sound worse? Probably sounds a little worse, but it still sounds really good. Sounds substantially better than the on-camera, the on-board microphone that's on the camera, I'm pretty sure. But I'm just saying, this is a great option, all right? You know, the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, I prefer this. I prefer this big thing, but you just saw me hold the other one up, and it, this is way bigger. I'm just saying. Man, it's way bigger, but this is also $250 versus the $40 Movo. I'm just saying there's a balance here. And I don't really think the gap, I don't think the gap is wide enough as far as like the quality. But you know, as far as the price, this is something that is literally about five times the price, six times the price actually. The reason why I recommend it again is that nowadays getting affordable quality sound is actually more attainable than it used to be. It used to be this was the main option for people. Now other companies are getting smarter, getting more knowledge out there and understand how to make a really good high quality 
audio products. So I recommend the Movo. Go ahead and get it. If you want to go with the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, if you got that dough, if you got that moolah like that, do what you got to do. But I just recommend the Movo first. All right. So now that we're in a more you know warm room, I'm going to transition to my normal filming space and we're gonna finish up the last two over there and I'm gonna talk through the you know some other stuff that the, the last two things I think you need as a videographer whether you're experienced or beginner all right so now that we're in a more comfortable space audio is gonna be a lot a bit different because we're using a different setup but you know I'm just saying I like the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus don't worry about that right now we're in the studio space so let's let's do it here so number four I will say number four this, I, years ago I wouldn't say and the reason why I wouldn't say that this would be number four is because because years ago it wasn't that affordable. Now it is a stabilizer, a gimbal, some sort of thing that you can use that will get you stable, good walking, tracking footage. The reason why I'm adding that to the list is because their gimbals like the Zhiyun Weibo S. Hold on just a moment. Oh, this thing here, the Zhiyun Weibo S. All right. The reason why I'm adding stabilizer to the list is because this thing is like $300. Now you can get it for $300, sometimes $400. Back in my day, when I first started this thing, this videography thing, gimbals were like $10,000. I remember the the Movi Pro was the thing. Um, it was just so many other gimbals out there that were used on like Hollywood sets that were not really attainable for the everyday videographer and content creator. But nowadays, the barrier to entry is very low. If you want to start low, you can spend money like on something like a Fade Tech gimbal or the Gion Weeble S, which I highly recommend for small mirrorless cameras. But if you need something bigger, once again, it's, it's very affordable now. There's like $600. If you have $600, you can spend money on the new Ronin RS2, the Ronin S, the original Ronin S, you can also get like a Zhiyun Crane 2S that is the big boy that can carry things like a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. It's a lot of words. 6K, 4K, the Z Cam. It, it just, it's just so many other stabilizers out there. And nowadays, it's kind of the standard. The standard now is that clients kind of want to see that. Clients want to see that smooth footage. Clients want to see that tracking, cinematic, that Hollywood kind of level looking footage that you would get from something like a SETI Cam. So because it's so accessible, more and more clients want to see it so that is the reason why i'm adding this to the list is because it's so much more affordable than it used to be and i think it's kind of like you know a thing you're going to need because i you know everyone wants stable footage all right stable footage means professional whether it's handheld or with the gimbal stable footage is what your client is going to always want all right so i'm going to put this gimbal back where i found it on my shelf and, and, and we're going to go to the last topic that i think is very important too you may not think it's important right now but it is very important it's especially if you're doing more professional work. Okay, so this last topic, we're gonna get, we got levels, okay? We're gonna level up every time I talk about one, we're gonna go to another level, another level, okay? So I think you should have a tripod. I don't know if you're a vlogger or someone that's doing more professional work, but you should have something that takes your hand away from the camera. The more your hands are touching the camera, the more shaky your footage is gonna be. So let's have tools that allow us to get our hands away from the camera, which will provide us with even more stable footage, even if it's hand Hell. First thing I'll say is this little bitty Manfrotto tripod, okay? This Manfrotto tripod is very affordable on Amazon. You can get it anywhere, okay? But the cool thing about this is that it already has like a ball head on it, so you can, boom, do this here. You can actually move this around. I'm pretty sure you've seen this thing before in many other videos, but I'm just trying to let you know this is one of my recommendations. But you can do that, set your camera on it, and of course, you can set it down. The problem here is that this is a very small like height, so you may not be able to sit this down and get the same kind of height you would get out of a conventional tripod but if you want to go with something cheap if you're a vlogger and you just really want to have something that is like easy to work with that's not too big i would recommend this if you want to spend a little bit extra money okay a little bit extra money you want to have that same handheld tripod kind of feel but at the same time a little bit more height a little bit more versatility i recommend the switch pod so this is the switch pod what i've done is i've added a ball head from the joby gorilla pod all right you see i did not recommend the joby gorilla pod just because over time, the, the, the legs will get a little bit more nimble and you don't want that just because you don't want to be putting your camera on something that is not as sturdy as it needs to be because like I said, these things, that, that gorilla pod, those legs kind of wear down over time. So this one not, this is a full metal frame, all right? This thing is solid, it is solid like a rock, but I always use the Joby Gorilla Pod ball heads. I love those the most on different things. They're very flexible. So. For this switch pod, I added that. You can also buy the switch pod version of the ball head, but again, I like the Jobies. So what's cool about the switch pod is that, all right, you have this here framing here, and of course you open it up and boom, there are your legs, okay? That's what I love about the switch pod, but in comparison, 
the height is different okay while this is this low you have something that is this high i'm just saying there is a this double the height pretty much i like this because i used this one day while i was vlogging getting behind the scenes of a of a shoot i was doing and it was just so versatile to be able to just sit this down and what was cool about the ball head is i could just adjust this wherever i wanted to so i'm saying the switch pod if you're willing to, you know, to spend a little bit extra money this is this is what i would go with if you want something smaller all right all right the third option for a tripod okay this is the aoka 28 inch um tripod it's a mini tripod all right you see it's a really 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 thin very small framework but what's cool about it is the same way as a conventional tripod it's actually pretty sturdy for a cheaper option out there it's about 80 dollars so cool thing about it is just like any other tripod you have those legs but these legs actually extend pretty far okay so they actually get up pretty high for a mini tripod so if you need something that is more i guess flexible than something like the switch pod it is pretty much the same height as the switch pod if, if you can C. So switch pod, boom, this side by side, they're actually very similar in height, but the Aoka is actually a bit taller. What's cool about this is with the switch pod, you can't get any additional height. With this, you can, and you still can if you want to. It's already a ball head on this thing. If you still want to have that kind of vlog feel, you can still do that. If you really want to hold this out and use it, it's a great tool, okay? I'm just trying to give you some versatility. Last piece of this, all right? We're going to talk about the KNF Concept Tripod. This is actually a full tripod. It's about, I think, 62 inches for this for the price this is the same price as the aoka the switch pod is within that 70 to 100 dollar range now again this is an actual tripod now when i tell you about the you know the, the other version the 62 inch i think this is the 75 inch but 62 inches for about i think 75 dollars if you want to get you know a little bit more height out of it, you want to spend about another 40 dollars okay so it's still within that 150 range i would recommend this tripod all right i would recommend the 62 inch version instead if you're not vlogging i recommend this if you're vlogging i recommend one of the others all right it's a trade-off but again this is a real tripod okay you have multiple lengths you can go with this thing all right we want this thing to be fully extended out you can go fully out i'm just saying like boom bow, boom okay it's a full tripod if you go over here if i unlock the top of this you'll see that i can actually bring this out even more again these are features from actual tripod this is a real tripod for the price cool thing about this too is that it's really all aluminum it's not made of really any plastic the switches here are plastic but other than that the base are really important pieces of a tripod that you want to be sturdy they're all aluminum okay this is a great great option if you need a really good starter tripod even someone that's more experienced if you want to have a tripod in the house this is what i use all right i like to keep these around just in case i want to set something up in a smaller space my bigger tripods that i have like on my zcam s6 right here those are not always you know suitable for a bigger space but this thing here is very versatile so the four options if you want to go small go small with the manfrotto if you want to go a little bit bigger all right you got the switch pod all right switch pod here want to go you know about the size of the switch pod but more versatility aoka right here all right so we got options which one would i recommend right now if you are a beginner i do still recommend the aoka the reason why is because you still get like a like the the features of this tripod in this small package but you also get this size all right so i'm just saying if you compare it it's like it's like this thing is all of these things that had a baby together okay so i'm just saying if you're just starting go with that if you want to go with a cheaper tripod that's actually a tripod go with this i'm just saying you have options here if you're a vlogger I mean, go with either one of these or the smaller version. I would still go with the switch pod if I'm vlogging, but it, I'm just saying, if you want something that's gonna get you the best bang for your buck, that's like good for vlogging, but also maybe setting up a quick shot, Aoka. So there you go. I hope this helps some people, you know, especially if you are a beginner, you know, I'm trying to give you some recommendations that are affordable, but at the same time, something that can actually allow you to do a good job on, on your gigs or even for your own content. So I hope this helps someone out there, even if you're a beginner or experienced, but those are my five recommendations. But remember, like, comment, subscribe to you, boy, support the channel. All right? We're growing, we're growing together. I appreciate it. All right. I'm gonna try to get back to every single one of you. I really do appreciate it, but I will see you you all on the next video. Peace out. I miss you.